our next speaker, he has more than two decades of proven startup sales and to-go market leadership experience. More, most recently, he served as executive chairman of East Entire, where he proved both strategic and operational leadership to support the company's growth and market expansion. He will be speaking about gaining a decisive advantage through terrain-based cyber defense. Let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Nick Lanto. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, um, as the introduction says, we're going to be here to talk about gaining advantage through understanding terrain. Um, and we're going to tell you not only you know what that means, but you know give you some uh, some examples uh, of it. <clears throat> so today's SOC, I, I think that everybody understands this. Uh, they're overwhelmed. Uh, it's a very reactive environment that is based on alerts and the proactive nature, uh, the hunt, the ability to get on your toes, uh, really isn't there uh, just by design. And the requirements are there to put together more of a holistic uh, view of the world and of the terrain and environment that you need to protect so as to be able to get more proactive uh, in, the, uh, you know, in the actual process of looking for bad uh, within networks. So part of this is the SIM. Uh, it was originally designed uh, to be a connector of logs um, right now, there is a lack of being able to answer the who, what, where, when, how of an IOC or a TTP that occurs. Uh, the depth needed for that is really deep understanding of not only your assets and your network topology, but also understanding what all of the metadata and the content look like uh, within your network so that it becomes easier uh, to be able to decipher and to react to it in a, in a way that is more proactive in nature. So from a detection standpoint, where you know, most technologies today look are really skimming the surface. Uh, they're looking at the initial compromise. They're looking uh, in areas that uh, necessarily don't cover all ports, all protocols. Uh, there's 65,000 ports out there. Uh, there are protocols uh, that, that get uncovered. Uh, some solutions will only do web and mail uh, and leave everything else to chance. Um, again, this goes back to that holistic nature of being able to uh, look for the blind spots where you know, attackers and especially sophisticated adversaries will both live. Um, and then being able to look at the content and look at the content in a way where you can unpack everything if it's being obfuscated down to its native payload, whether that payload is, is malware that's coming into your network that's trying to do malicious things, or whether that may be exfiltration of data, uh, which are good, you know, good information that you don't want to leave your organization. Uh, but again, being able to get down to investigating and interrogating all of the content and all the mechanisms that could be used across all ports, all protocols bidirectionally. Um, and then it is also, you know, the, the nature of the technology world today, uh, as it's been defined by the Gartners of the world, is that security is a problem where you need a 70 product stack in your environment to protect yourselves because everything is so segmented um, and specific. Um, and the real issue there is that there is a lack of integration there's a lack of interoperability, there's an overlap of capabilities within that environment uh, that creates seams and gaps and don't take into consideration this holistic view. Uh, the promise is there, but the actual execution and operationalization of it isn't there. So most security solutions look here. What's really needed is a solution that looks across your entire environment in a very deep and, and forensically valid manner. How do we do this? The, the premise and the baseline of it is really deep uh, and rich metadata. So metadata, meaning that we can answer the who, what, where, when, and how is of an attack. Um, it comprises of, in our case, more than 250 uh, metadata types and all of the content that is resident on your network um, that, come in, that comes in and goes out. 
The objective of this is to protect data and your assets. So by doing this, by understanding the terrain, we can go and understand the values that are in there from an asset standpoint, from a data standpoint. And once we understand those, those components, now we can start to become predictive. Now we can start to determine where are the paths of exfiltration? Where are the paths, most common paths or predictable paths of command and control? Uh, where are the paths of, of downloads of, uh, of nefarious tools that are being used in your environment? And now we can start doing things that really do get after the key component of protecting your assets and protecting your data in a way that is more understandable. By understanding that terrain, by understanding where your data resides, by understanding um, you know, what's enclave, what the architectures look like, now we can start to think more like the adversaries and thus you know, focus in on the blind spots and the weak points and be able to then protect ourselves in a better manner. So this all leads to gaining a decisive advantage, right? How do we do it? There's a couple key points. Continuous monitoring, right? This is something that needs to be done. Uh, we need to monitor both managed and unmanaged assets, right? You hear a lot of solutions proclaim that it's all about endpoint and the cloud. Well, the reality is that they're in environments, there's a lot of unmanaged assets out there that you can't load an endpoint onto. There is shadow IT, there are legacy systems, there's places where you simply can't just do it off of an endpoint, but you need that full visibility that comes with both doing endpoint, doing the network side of it, and also adding in deception where you can change the terrain and the paths and, and what that um, network actually looks like from an adversary's perspective. And then turning over to more of a threat-driven operation. Um, what do I mean by that? It means that you're actually working off of IOCs and TTPs, not alerts that are being generated, where you know, we're being flooded with alerts right now that have to be curated. Um, the SOC teams can't get through all of them. They're in large organizations, millions of these a day. You can only get through tens or hundreds of them in a day, and then it's Groundhog Day again. It starts all over again, and you have the exact same problem the next day. So this is more driven by actual indicators of compromise, TTPs, where it points you towards you know, multiple triangulations of, of metadata and behavioral activities and views from the network that point you towards things that really are more curated and become actionable intel in a much more automated fashion. And then by doing so as well, we can shape the adversary's experience. What do I mean by that? The, the goal is to slow the adversary down, right? You know, the latest that I've heard is that, you know, certain adversaries take minutes from the time that they land in your network until they move laterally. Um, so you have to be prepared to act quickly, to move quickly, but what we want to also do is we want to start adding cost and expense to the adversary's experience. We want to shape so that we can slow them down. We want to do things that are active defense in nature um, that allow us to gain an advantage back so that we're not the only ones incurring expense. We can actually push some of that expense and cost and, and time back to the adversary. And doing this in a manner where we consolidate some of that security stack. So the view of the 70 products, it could be 40 products, it could be 70 products, but the view that there is a massive amount of products in your network that are trying to integrate, correlate, orchestrate, and coordinate together across something that you need, you have only minutes to react to, is really difficult to do. So our view is that there is a more holistic view to this problem set that includes terrain, which is your network and your assets, it includes data, it includes the metadata that flies around your network and your endpoint, it, it includes behavioral characteristics from your endpoint and your network, it includes communication paths, and bringing that all together in an environment that allows you to hunt and detect and respond in a more formidable fashion than what's available today. We've talked about the visibility, uh, detect and respond faster. This needs to be done in an automated fashion, but also allows you to do manual work on it as well. If you look at the problem set that we're confronted with is we have networks that have 65,000 ports. We have protocols that are known and unknown, and we have a 
ability now to go and look at all ports, all protocols bi-directionally and be able to interrogate that in a manner that we can see inside the seams and the cracks that other solutions that should be integrated together and aren't will simply mess. Um, we do this through some technology that we patented that are focused on sessions. So we break it down into communication paths. And by doing so, we take all the metadata around those communication paths and we analyze them and interrogate them. 250 plus types, all the content associated with it. Um, and this leads to faster response and this leads to better visibility and understanding of what is going on from a threat standpoint in your environment. Terrain. So this is the view of some of the screens that we have in our deception product. And on the right hand side, it gives you basically from top down in order, the ability to look at the risk of the device, a geospatial view and a path view of what's happening. And what we do here is we go and interrogate the network. We do a, a discovery and classification of all your assets so we can tell you what devices are attached by name, what they're communicating with, what data is residing on there, what OSs are residing on there, what services are running. And this is a visualization of your assets. And it's not done as, a, as an audit, um, but it's done in a continuous manner where as things connect and deconnect, we're able to see those and be able to uh, include those in the deceptions that we turn up that look and flex and breathe as your normal network would do. So keys to terrain and cyberspace is really being able to take what you have as a, as a network and be able to turn up additional nodes in and around what you have that you wanna protect. So you can start determining uh, where maybe you might have uh, enclaves that are uh, strategic to you, where your key servers are, uh, that they may reside. And what we can do in that environment is that if you have 10 critical uh, servers that you want to protect, we can turn up 10,000 that look exactly like it. So what does that do? It slows the attacker down. Why? Because instead of a rifle shot going into that one server, now he'll have you know, a thousand that look exactly like that one to determine where it is. So instead of it being a rifle shot, it becomes the adversary spinning a roulette wheel, having to slow down and having to determine which one is the right one to touch and which ones are the right ones to avoid. So these are the seven major metadata buckets um, where we provide understanding of the, of the environment from subnets all the way down to applications and then you can see the coverage models of the various components of our, of our solution. So attack surface, how do you manipulate it? It's really an equation. It's the whole percentage of exploitable terrain, right? And it's a numerator and denominator here. Um, so it's the quantity, the number of exploitable boxes that you have, and it's also the quantity of total terrain. So you can, you can modify this in one of two ways. You can either patch up your, your, uh, your servers that you currently have, you can make them fortified so that they withstand an attack, or you can simply just increase the denominator um, and flood the adversary screen with devices out there that look all the same. Uh, and you know this is a way where deception fits into this. Uh, we have the ability to mimic the actual servers that are critical to you in a way that they look and feel and move and flex the same as your actual servers because it's an emulation or we can put gold images up. Um, and we do this again, as we talked about through the various components of the platform. So it's automated detect and respond is really the catchphrase. Uh, but what that really means is that there is real time analytical capability and understanding of your full network topology of your full uh, metadata and content that was in your network. And it also provides the backbone for doing retrospective analysis. So the ability to do forensics back into this and understand what's happening. So as you go through this process of turning up deceptive networks, if it's just deception as a standalone and you have someone that touches your decoy, then you need a way to respond to it and you need a way to understand what is going on in that environment. So, you know, the ability to roll back 
all the way through, you know, the initial, uh, you know, and you know, the initial entry into a network, the lateral movement, the view of, of tools being downloaded, the surveillance paths, the CNC that goes, and eventually the exfil, be able to take all of that into consideration based on the fact that somebody touched one of the decoys is very powerful. That is what we mean by having a holistic view of an environment. And, and that correlation of having network, working with endpoint, working with a deception layer, and then you know, being, a, being a friendly neighbor inside the security architecture of working in and, and touching and correlating and um, uh, working with the SIMs and the SORs and the next-gen firewalls is really critical to success of this. So we've adopted the MITRE attack framework. We've mapped um, our visibility and our ability to detect across uh, all the various components, so all the techniques and procedures of the adversaries. Uh, we do this in the form of multiple detections. So as, as something bad is, is traversing through your network from initial surveillance through exfil, we're shooting at that uh, from different angles, from uh, different standpoints. So we're, we'll do it with, um, you know, whitelists. We'll do it through some signatures. We'll do it through behavioral characteristics on the on the boxes themselves from human behavioral characteristics. We'll do it through our own uh, research that we that we provide. Um, but you know, the idea that we're looking and facilitating the uh, ability to you know provide holistic security uh, across the entire kill chain. So it's not just a one shot at something bad. If it passes through, hands up in the air, say hey, everything's good, traffic must be clean. It's not like that, right? We need to go and find and be able to pull out those bad things that are baselined into your traffic as normal. And you know, normal right now is you know is a very uh, difficult concept to get to as security practitioners because you have to look at the world as that your network is already compromised. And if you look at it in that way, then this ability to have deep visibility into the network, this ability to to understand what's happening, will really allow you to not only just find needles in the haystack, but create you know, a pile of needles that you can now analyze and be able to determine and pull out what's actually bad uh, within the environment. So the benefits of deception, multiple. Uh, it's a great early alarm system. So if somebody touches a decoy, they shouldn't be touching it. Right? It's just that simple. Um, but it also provides you that terrain mapping. It gives you that ability to understand what you need to protect. Because if you don't understand what your network looks like, if you don't understand the topology, if you don't understand what's connected, if you don't understand what the paths are outside of your environment, then it's very difficult to defend it, right? It's like playing basketball without a hoop behind you, right, a net, right? You need to know what you're defending. Um, so what we do is we go out and test the network. Uh, when we go and test the network, we actually build a deceptive network that looks just like it. So now we know what all the assets are in your network, what they're doing, how they're behaving. Uh, and then we can go out and, and mimic that from a, a network standpoint. Um, the decoys will then become chatty. They'll start interacting on the network, so they'll bring attention to themselves. Next, we want to deploy breadcrumbs, and we'll deploy those on existing assets in your network that will point towards the decoys that make the decoys even more enticing right, to go and want to interface with as an adversary. And the idea is that we will modify everything from cookies to registries to files um, in order to do so. And then we will interface also with Active Directory. So this again enhances the, you know, the viability that that decoy becomes more of a, of a uh, target that is desirable uh, to the adversary. And then last, we'll go ahead and classify the traffic. So we'll tell you what's running, we'll tell you what the communications are, we'll tell you what assets are connected to what assets, uh, and we'll show what paths are available uh, to lead the network. So in wrapping this up, the idea of presenting and deploying a holistic cybersecurity infrastructure that gives you visibility first and foremost across all ports, all protocols, bi-directionally, is, is a baseline and table stakes for being able to protect yourself. If you're only relying on protecting you know, certain ports and you're leaving others to chance, 
or you're only able to you know, view and identify certain protocols and leave others to chance, then you're leaving a susceptibility open that the adversaries know how to exploit, and they will. Um, when you combine that with the ability um, you know, to map your terrain out and to be able to understand what assets are there, uh, determining which are your critical assets, hopefully having the ability to modify and architect your environment into enclaves uh, to protect those critical assets. Um, you know, this starts to change the relationship between the adversary and between the defender. Uh, right now, most teams are rocked back on their heels playing defense. They're being flooded by alerts and their entire SOC infrastructure has been reduced to alert triage, most of which are false positives, most of which are dead ends. They all take time to, to run through, right? The burnout rate of SOC analysts is growing uh, significantly. The efficacy of a you know, minimally deep log-based environment that doesn't answer the who, what, where, when, how, why in a, in a quick and efficient manner is taking its toll um, on the efficacy of, of environments out there uh, and defenders. And so when you combine that ability to take in what your network looks like, understand the data and the content that's flowing on your network, that's flowing across your devices, understanding you know, the ports and the protocols and everything that is, uh, is, is flying across from a traffic standpoint, now you've got the ability to shape. Now you've got the ability to modify the terrain through these decoy networks. You have the ability to turn up decoys. You have the ability to shape an adversary's experience by slowing them down, by making them pause, by making them think. Um, and the more that you set up these deceptive environments, the higher the probability is that you'll see them in a timely manner and stop them from doing bad within the network. So I think the, the last thing I wanna leave you with is uh, there's things about more data that aren't necessarily always good, right? When you bring in, constantly bring in more into that sim to curate and understand what's happening, uh, more data in this environment may not be the right thing to do. The right kind of data is really what you should be looking for. You should be looking for a solution that has that ability to correlate and integrate all this together in a holistic manner um, and has that ability to do the hunt and response in an automated manner and the ability to you know, work in the timelines that the adversaries have, uh, which are very fast and getting only faster uh, today. So uh, with that, I think we have a, a couple of minutes for questions. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you.